Changing a thermostat in one of these V6 M112 engines or the V8 M113 is so easy. I mean, this really is something you can do yourself. There's only two bolts that hold it in place. And as you can see, it comes integral with the thermostat and a brand new aluminum housing. So you don't have to deal with some of those problems that you've seen on some of the older cars where you have corrosion, you have the thermostat stuck in the aluminum housing, and you have to get it out and spend a lot of time cleaning up the corrosion on the lip to make sure it properly seals. So this comes with a new seal already installed. You don't have to worry about any gasket cement. It's just basically, there it is. You pull two bolts out and you're going to replace it with this new unit here. Now, access is underneath this front cover, so you're going to have to pop the cover off first. And now you can see the thermostat is located right here, right at this end of this top radiator hose, drain about a gallon to a gallon and a half of coolant out of the engine, and then remove this top radiator hose. You do want to replace these anytime you think that your engine is not heating up very fast, maybe it's taking too long to warm up to get the heater to work in your car, or maybe it's not coming up to full temperature. At that point, change the thermostat, okay? If you have one of these MLs, you want to get underneath from time to time and check for any kind of oil leaks. Notice here, there's a bunch of oil around that sway bar bracket. That's because it's draining out of the pan. Some oil chain shop is just letting it run onto that bracket. But the engine's pretty tight. It's pretty clean. It looks pretty good underneath, too. But you always want to check those radiator hoses. You know, over the years, I think failed radiator hoses have left more people stranded. So we're going to take a close look at both the lower and upper radiator hose see if there's any signs of wear or cracking. Particularly pay close attention to those areas where you might see chafing. And sure enough, look at this place right here. It's rubbing on that bracket on the engine. It's really hard to film this, but there is a cut in the hose right where it's rubbing up against that you see that little bracket there, but right below that, or right in behind that is a little bolt and the head of that bolt is cutting into the radiator hose. I wanna show you a close up of this hose that we just removed from that ML320. The first thing I noticed, it's a pretty thin rubber hose. I would lean towards a thick hose on these lower radiator hoses because failure of this part has caused so many, so much grief in the past. But I wanna show you the place where it was chafing on that bolt head. You might not be able to see it real clearly in this video, but it started to cut into the rubber and it's cut about halfway through the thickness of this hose. So if that hadn't have been caught by a close inspection of the hose, this could have led to some serious and even expensive problems. So I'm going to say keep a close eye on your radiator hoses, inspect them for any points of chafing, and I would recommend that you replace these every 100,000 miles. These get left on cars a lot longer than they should.